going to talk about topography, what works and what doesn't in modern day LASIK practice. So I will start my talk with a patient which I saw a few days back in my OPD, a 38 year old gentleman walked in with decreased vision. He gave me history of uh, LASIK done seven to eight years back for a very minimal refraction as you can see it on the board. What he showed me was his pre-op packy of 500 micron and a K metry topo was written but there were no images like 45 and 43. So to be very frank when you see it, it doesn't look very very abnormal. His current refraction in the right eye is minus one cylinder uh, with 6-9 vision and left eye was plano with 6-6. Six, six. When, uh, when we did his topography there was a frank, frank post LASIK ectasia in the right eye and if you see in the left eye also there is a ectasia which is developing. So this brings us to a very good important that why is it so important for us to do a very good pre-LASIK or pre-refractive surgery evaluation. Even though the incidence of post-LASIK ectasia, there's no uh, precise incidence available, but it is still there and we do not want our young uh, patients to get into this lifelong uh, uh, problem, in, uh, problem in their life, you know. So it's very important for us to do a very good, uh, uh, very good evaluation and see whether our patient on which we are going to do uh, a surgery is, uh, uh, is safe to undergo these kind of operations. Uh, so what are the common risk factors for post-LASIK ectasia? As we all know that low residual stromal bed thickness, abnormal preoperative topography, thin uh, corneas or high refractive index, so the more ablation is there. So it's very important, as I mentioned, to do everything, whatever is there in our clinic available, or if it is not there, maybe you can go to uh, take uh, 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 whatever, like, you know, other your friends' uh, clinics help and do the evaluation properly. So we do require a stable refraction for one year, normal topography, pachymetry more than 500 or RSB of 300, epithelial thickness maps, specular microscopy, abrometry, and all of these are going to be discussed by different consultants out here. The, uh, so I, what I am going to talk about is topography. This brings us to a very important question, what is topography and what is tomography? So topography is basically, it's like a 2D, 3D kind of a thing. Topography uses placido disc principle, so it only evaluates your anterior corneal surface and the tear film. And tomography is a 3D uh, kind of computation. So it actually gives you or assess anterior and posterior corneal curvature, something in between these two. It gives you corneal thickness, con anterior chamber depth, and it also gives you information about iris and lens. So there are different technologies by which this can happen, like a scanning slit technology, a stream flag imaging, and OCT also. What I am going to discuss here is Pentacam and Cirrus. So Pentacam uses stream flag imaging and uh, Cirrus uses, Cirrus and Galilei are the ones which use Placido disc as well as the Schimpflug imaging. So why tomography again? Uh, as as uh, in my first uh, example, what I showed is everything looked normal. Maybe the topography was done, but everything was maybe normal in that we did not have images to comment on that. But sometimes the epithelial changes around the cone, they tend to mask the early ectatic changes. So it is very important for us to evaluate the posterior surface because you can pick up a lot of subtle changes as keratoconus many a times manifests with uh, posterior changes. So instead of topography, what we are going to discuss is tomography and instead of just pre-LASIK surgery, what we are going to talk is whenever I say pre-LASIK, I'm talking about everything pre-LASIK, pre-smile, pre-PRKs and all the refractive surgeries which are there uh, in our uh, armamentarium. So this is a very typical refractive map of Pentacam. As you can see, it gives the sagittal curvature, anterior, posterior elevation, and corneal thickness, the global pachymetry. So our antennae or the red flags of, uh, of these are, uh, whenever there is any kind of inferior irregular steepening, like this, anterior elevation more than 12 microns, posterior elevation more than 17 microns, and all these things the, should match with the thinnest point. So all the things should coincide with each other. It cannot be that your steepening is somewhere else, your uh, uh, cone is somewhere else, the posterior elevation is somewhere else, and the thinnest point is somewhere else. That doesn't work. So you have to coincide all these things, and then it actually gives you the diagnosis. This, uh, the tomography, the elevation, what we are talking about, uh, brings us to the concept of reference surface. So what it is basically is you need something to compare with or you need to kind of unmask the irregularities in the cornea. So you need a reference surface which matches your uh, cornea a bit and then it will kind of enhance your subtle uh, irregularities. So there are different uh, uh, different reference surfaces which are available like Pentacam uses spherical best fit sphere, 
uh, Serious uses story case fear there would be uh, you can you have a choice in each machine that you can go and actually change it and every time you have uh, like every machine will have a reference surface for that particular cornea this again brings us to the concept of enhanced reference surface. So what is it actually? So the reference surface, as I said, is for each cornea. Like if I do topography for me, my reference surface uh, machine will uh, measure. And that uh, reference surface is utilized. And whatever is up above that is elevation. Whatever is there is uh, below that is flat or cornea. So enhanced reference surface, how Pentacam does it? It is generally taken the whole cornea, but an enhanced reference surface, what it excludes is a four millimeter area around the thinnest point. So the steepest point, if there is a keratoconus, the steepest points are there around your thinnest point of the cornea, they are excluded. So the resultant enhanced surface is flatter in keratoconus. What happens in a normal cornea is your enhanced reference surface as well as the normal reference surface will be more or less same because there are no uh, steep points or no uh, abnormally steep points. But in keratoconus around that thin point there will be a lot of steep points which are excluded. So it kind of accentuates your subtle cones with the enhanced reference surface. And this is the concept they have used in the bad display. They what The first two are the normal reference surface, the middle row is with the enhanced reference surface and the lower row is what the difference between the two and they make a category into green, yellow and red. Again on the, uh, on the uh, right hand side there is a pachymetry section which is very important. CTSP and PTI is nothing but basically what they mean is how a pachymetry or the thickness is changing from your thinnest point towards the periphery. So it gives you subtle clue about whether there is an edema, whether there is thinness, how your uh, pack is changing from thinnest point towards the periphery. These red marks uh, are not parameters, but it's just a regressive analysis. So you should not worry if there's one single red mark which is there. You should always correlate all the things together. Uh, there are a lot of asymmetric indices. Generally, the vertical asymmetric indices is important. This is a serious map. The colors look very different, but you actually start reading it. It's very, very similar to Pentacam. These are the same four maps. Instead of uh, uh, the sagittal anterior curvature it uses by default tangential anterior curvature in serous and there are the same four maps which are there what serous has uh, uh, how it uh, kind of evaluates keratoconus is by the symmetry index vertical asymmetry it considers the highest point of ectasia on anterior posterior elevation and it kind of presumes that the cone starts in the inferior temporal area so bcvf and bcvb is nothing but it manifests the coma trefoil and the spherical aberration so it considers all these things along with your minimum thickness and classes your topography into normal abnormal suspect of rank keratoconus keratoconus summary is a very nice map the middle row what you are seeing is it's the patient's elevation uh, which is compared with the standardized elevation the normalized standard they have it in the machine the right hand side corner is very good i really like that map the black and white one because it kind of gives you all the points if they are together that means everything is coincide but if those points are scattered together it's probably not keratoconus and something else or it could be just a normal cornea uh, it also gives you the uh, serious also gives you the ctsp and pti chart so the machines are more or less same you just need to get used to all these machines so this brings us to a, a, a one more example so if you see this particular pentacam map the curvature map looks pretty okay to me elevation anterior is good so if this was only a topography, maybe we would have gone ahead with the uh, LASIK surgery or any refractive surgery. But if you see the elevation, there is a minor small elevation. It's plus 16, not big, but it should kind of uh, uh, put your antenna up that, okay, this could be something abnormal and you should avoid surgery in such cases. Again, this looks very, very normal to me. But if you actually see the thinnest point is way away from your central point, the apical point. So these are the subtle signs which the tomography gives us. Maybe this is a very, very early sign and you should watch such patients and not go ahead with the refractive surgery. So tomography that way gives us a lot of information which is happening throughout our uh, posterior cornea and uh, the pachymetry. So this, these are again the patients where your anterior curvature seems perfectly normal but both his eyes had on posterior elevation there was a cone as well as a thin uh, packy and decentered uh, uh, this thing uh, thinnest packy this is a serious map again it looks different but if you start reading it is the same as i told you earlier there is an inferior steepening out here not much but it is there so these are again very no uh, uh, thing for the re, uh, for the refractive surgery so these are the cases which are very very important for us even though the machine shows suspect i would say not even do prk in such a case 
so you should follow up such patients take history this is a very very interesting topo when i saw this topo there is a inferior asymmetry anterior posterior elevation is fine and if you look at the pachymetry it's very very thick cornea i do not know what it is then when i saw this uh, CTSC, PTI, the first thing which, I, which came into my mind is we should do specular microscopy because this could be a case of fuke the way it is progressing the CTSP, PTI. So these are the clues you get it on tomography and maybe again fuchs is a, uh, is a contraindication for your refractive surgery although the PACI is very very good in such a case maybe this case is again also a no for refractive surgery. So to summarize it topograph tomography is must for new age pre-refractive surgery evaluation because we need to be very very safe in this era for our patients curvature map elevation map thinness point all should be considered together and do not read only one particular map posterior elevation and global uh, packy will give you a lot of subtle changes and early signs for you to look into the topography and bad d because it uses enhanced reference surface kind of enhances subtle cone thank you so much Thank you, Dr. Sheetal, for that very detailed uh, talk on uh, uh, Pentacam. It was almost like a mini masterclass on topography. Very well explained with uh, nice examples. So uh, I just had a small question. Uh, how reliable do you think is the bad display? You showed some really good examples of bad uh, detecting early keratoconus but do you always depend on bad or do you have some other parameters? No, so as or? I said I generally do not go only by one particular thing maybe my bad is bad but then my four maps are pretty decent you know and uh, the examination is okay so I may not just kind of refuse the surgery for that patient but I will not even go ahead directly and I would watch that patient maybe after six months again repeat the tomography. Because bad so it. few times uh, I have seen if the cornea is just steep Yes. Just a steep cornea, if it's a contact lens wearer, you will see changes on the difference yeah, map in the anterior. Exactly. So it's just for the audience that do not uh, believe these maps with, you know, uh, closed eyes and don't, don't trust them blindly because you have to correlate everything clinically and then decide uh, also on the Also all the maps and all the indices which are available, yeah. you have to always... Uh, study them together and not only single bad D, okay, bad D is bad, so you should not do that. You should always kind of take everything into consideration. If there is a doubt, repeat the tomography after three months or six months and then decide.